Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the third episode of the Just Do It podcast with yours truly, I Didn't Do It 97. Thank you for tuning in. If you missed the other two episodes, both are on YouTube. Go back, check it out, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, before we get into today's episode, do want to let you know that this channel is sponsored by Own3D.TV. Own3D.TV is a, a wonderful website uh, for the design specifically for streamers like me um to where whether you stream on twitch youtube facebook all 3d gives you all kinds of different overlays alerts emotes channel banners twitch panels you name it they got it and it's all completely customizable um to to a t you could design each one the way you want or you could just pick pre-made ones um whether you're just starting out and need the basics or you're looking for that professional look um, Own3D offers hundreds of options covering a wide variety of different styles and aesthetics. Um, so you're definitely sure to find something that's that's going to fit your brand. Um, th the link will be in the description down below if you want to support the channel. Um, right now, they do have a 55% off sale going on. So definitely check them out, Own3D.TV. Today on the podcast, we have a, a really close friend of mine. Um, he and I, we, we've met through uh, work. Um, God, what's it? Five years ago, right? Shit, five years ago, um, and uh, turns out he's a, a bit of a, a goof like myself. And um, you know, while I'm the better looking friend, um, says you, yeah, says, <laughs> says me. Um, it's true though. Uh, you know, again, love him to death. He's a, he's an awesome person. Uh, my buddy Lambert here. Uh, he's actually been on stream. Um, he's been in various uh, the various YouTube videos I've uploaded. And, Things like that. So, uh, Lambert, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, man. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, man. Uh, right now, I'm I'm basically just an unemployed bum with no dreams and aspirations, just uh, enjoying my life. Uh, except I'm an Eagles fan, so I can't. So that yeah, that's a little rough. It's a little rough. Um, although I mean, hey, dude, they they played well against the Jets. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, we really beat up the worst team in the league. We really showed them. <laughs> dude dallas goddard got me like 30 some points in fantasy yeah even though i started him it was nice even though i'm out of the playoffs um in our league we're playing for uh for like most points gets their money back mm -hmm. um and right now i have the most points even though i have the worst record in the league um Amen. so so, <laughs> so dallas goddard is uh he's, he's keeping my hopes alive um yeah if for every injury starts, uh, Dallas Carter will get you points. Unfortunately, true. he's not. So that is, yeah, that is true. That is true. What What's the deal with Jalen Hurts? By the way, I just I just found out like literally yesterday that he was going to be inactive. Uh he messed up his ankle, I think, and um, they thought he was good to go, but I think they were just like, eh, it's the Jets. Um, plus, they have a bye next week, so I think that they're just kind of. They were kind of being precautious, to be honest. But uh, gotcha. it kind of sucks because it's like Philly, Philly media. So Gardner Minshew starts. He plays really well. And now all of a sudden, Jalen Hurts, uh, you know, everyone wants him out. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just that's typical Philly fans. I mean, that's just what else is new. Yeah. But, um, well, all right. So, I mean, you already kind of briefly touched on it. But for those who, who don't know you, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Tell us, uh, you know, games you play, your aspirations, shit like that. Uh, yeah, so, I don't know, it's really weird, I'm kind of like in a, in a limbo stage right now, uh, I just finished school not too long ago, and, um, kind of got in a thing where it's like, not 100% ready to work yet, um, so I'm just kind of chilling a bit, but, uh, it's fine, uh, it's just dreams, uh, I don't know, man, I want to be streaming the rest of my life and make millions of dollars while doing nothing, uh, I think that's a good thing to strive for uh true i haven't streamed yet haven't even tried it but uh i'm sure when i do i'll blow up and become rich and famous yes and even better absolutely. Looking. um <laughs> i expect that to happen uh already better looking than dave but you know we'll, we'll get, move on and then get even higher than that i think uh yeah dead to me yeah i mean it's, it's fine dude um what kind of games do you play what's uh what's some stuff you're gonna do um I like a lot of genres. I play a lot of stuff. Uh, like right now, as we're speaking, I'm playing Minecraft. Um, that's like not a constant though. Like, just like you, I'm mostly into FPS, so Call of Duty, Battlefield, um, 
CS, you know, the whole nine yards. Uh, it just sucks that they've been so um, uh, barren, I guess, or just average lately. So it's like it's tough to grind out an FPS game, even even with Halo coming out. Like, I'm I'm not a huge fan of the new Halo, so it's it's you know it kind of sucks from someone who mostly plays those games to now have very little to like sink my teeth into, kind of. Yeah, I mean that's that's definitely fair. Um which brings us into our our first topic of of discussion. Um I know you saw it cuz we've we've talked about it and obviously we've we've come prepared for this podcast cuz uh we are true professionals here. Um Yeah, we spent hours of research. Yes, 100%. Um this this definitely made the rounds quite a bit um as of I mean what was it like 2 weeks ago I think. Um where uh the game my friend peppa pig came out and uh had a higher rating um i think through metacritic if i'm not mistaken um than the gta uh definitive trilogy call of duty vanguard and battlefield 2042 combined um all very highly anticipated games um all very, I mean, beloved series and, and franchises. Um, I mean, what's, give me your thoughts. What's, what's your take when it comes to that? Well, Dave, as, um, as you and me both know very well, uh, Peppa Pig, uh, I mean, it's, it's a blockbuster of emotions <laughs> containing all the essentials of a modern masterpiece. And I, I don't think there's much <laughs> room for debate there, you know? Sure. Yeah. Can't, can't disagree. Hundred percent. Yep. Um, <laughs> a more serious tone. Uh, <laughs> I mean, listen. I mean, it's listen. I don't even know what the game is about. Someone, someone could come up to me and tell me the new Peppa Pig is about an FPS slaughtering the characters in the show. I'd believe them because I, I have no idea what this game's about. But right. Um, it's very. Uh, I mean, it's it's one of those. I mean, it's obviously a game made for kids, right? So it's probably mostly parents reviewing the game right yep. so they're sitting at their computer the kid playing the game not bothering the parent and the parents like hell yeah man this game's sick and the writing review yeah this game's great distracts my kid for hours and in reality i mean like you know it's it's impossible to like compare different genres of games because obviously if ea attempted to make a my friend peppa pig game i'm sure it would be fantastic you know so i mean would it though it is ea we're talking about I mean, it would have monetization for sure, for sure. Different shirt, a blue <laughs> shirt would cost you ten dollars. Uh, you know, different pig ears would cost you thirty dollars, maybe a month, for all I know. Um, a set of overalls is going to cost you like, uh, you know, about five loot boxes. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, I, I would expect maybe, uh, maybe fifty dollars a month to even just launch the game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I that that wouldn't be totally unexpected. True. True. Yeah, man, it's it's nuts because like I, I mean, you and I we've we've played we played a lot of Vanguard together. Um, we played a little bit of Battlefield before I ultimately refunded it. Um, yep. you did, indeed, <laughs> coward. And uh, <laughs> which I've heard I, I, after like the recent patch that came out like a week ago, I've heard it's actually gotten better. Uh, the um, the game is very very playable now. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So uh, maybe I'll buy it again, but like when it's on sale. Fuck. Um. And then, uh, you know, we've obviously played GTA together and, and, you know, you know me, like I'm, I'm very, very much into GTA and, um, it's one of my favorite game series ever. Yeah. Um, and, and so to, to see the reviews that have come out on these games and, and, and seeing where <laughs> the state of gaming is right now, um, it's it is it is so so disappointing like yeah yeah ga gaming right now is um you almost call it a low point i think in many years uh i mean 20 2013 2014 not 2013 2014 was pretty bad um because <clears throat> the new consoles ps4 and xbox one came yep. out and yep. there was like no really fantastic i think dragon no. was like the, the best game to come out that year which is yeah, saying something right 100 um, yeah I uh, Destiny One, which I played uh, religiously, but even I'll admit sure. that game is uh, trash, basically. But um, <laughs> uh, it's um, 
yeah, right now it's it's rough, and and a lot of people are you know they're they're, they're blaming the whole COVID thing, and and that's fine. But I think even even before COVID was really uh, a thing, we 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 saw a decline, and then the quality of games coming out. So I actually don't know how much um, it has actually affected the quality of stuff. Uh, probably the timetable of releases, but um, I just don't know. Uh, I just don't know if uh, if we're heading in a direction that's good for gaming or bad. It's tough to tough to say right now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's. I think it's one of those things where like we're just stuck in the situation of kind of like movies to where like you're seeing a lot of just remakes being done of of just old shit um to try to bring in that quote unquote nostalgia feeling yep. but i think that's more so the fact that a lot of game developers just either don't care right now and they're just trying to get money or they're just out of ideas like i, I think yeah. it, i think it's a lot of that and it shows with with franchises like call of duty and battlefield um you know for example like i mean it's it's call of duty in particular like it's just the same formula year after year after year like vanguard feels no different i mean it, it feels better than cold war but like in terms of of play style and in terms of you know just the overall experience it is no different than what cold war was than what modern warfare was like it, it is it is literally just the same it, it's copy and paste just year after year after year after year um and and if not for warzone i mean call of duty would be back on the decline again um uh, absolutely yeah and 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 battlefield like battlefield is is I mean, it was was already very much on the decline after you know Battlefield One and Battlefield Five. Battlefield One was a great game, but um, did not it doesn't get as much love as it deserves. Um, and Battlefield Five was just that was just bad. Um, what was Battlefield Five? Damn, that's a valid question. Actually, what do you um, mean was that game? Dude? That's that's a valid question. Um, and then 2042 like had high hopes, and you know, and then it releases in the state that it was in. And man, I I, I wish they would have just delayed it. To be honest with you, I, I wish they would have just delayed it, taken their time with it. Um, especially because like they 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 with Battlefield 2042, they're taking the same approach that they're taking with with like Warzone, for example, to where um it's just like that is going to be their game for a while. Um. Like they don't have any intentions of making another battlefield for quite a bit. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and the whole idea with that is to continue to grow this quote unquote story that they got going on within the game itself, um, with the whole Russia versus U.S. you know war. Um, so for, at that point, you you should have just delayed the release. Like I, I mean, to me, it would have made. Well, I mean, they already did delay it, but delayed it again um i think i think the player base just would have been so much happier at the same token and we even discussed it even after playing the beta that's every battlefield ever though they every time it launches it never is good at at initial release and then eventually they fix it yeah i mean they they all come up at like every battlefield exactly but like that shouldn't be the case and I, and again i think it just goes to show just how much or how little i should say that gaming devs care. It just it, like these big companies sh are showing time and time again how little they care about fans' opinions and fans' reactions. And that's where I give Rockstar some credit because they at least pulled their game from from being able to be purchased, um, so they could fix it. Mm -hmm. um, but at that point, you should have just not released it because it's just a really bad look. Um, yeah, and I think that's a, I think that that whole conversation is just a very, it, you could apply it to basically every single dev and publisher at this point. Like every game that comes out, that is super disappointing because it's just not polished and there's bugs and all these issues and features missing. It's like you should have just delayed it. Um, the issue is when you delay stuff, like gamers get upset, right? Like very upset. Oh, because. 100%. You give a timetable, like, okay, 
it's 2022. We even saw with God of War now. Uh, I think God mm. of War got uh, delayed, didn't it? It did. It did. It did. Yeah. So even that got a delay now. And that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing for the game because it's expected to be great. And if you have to delay it to make it great, good. Everyone, everyone agrees. I, correct right? me if I'm wrong. The, the first one got delayed too, didn't it? Uh, maybe. I have no idea, to be honest with you. Um, it came out 2018. I, yeah, I, like, I'm almost positive. Like, it, it was supposed to come out in like the fall, and it got delayed to like the spring or something like that or the next yeah, year. You're, pro you're probably right. You're probably right. Um, but yeah, and even with uh, with Cyberpunk, right? Like Cyberpunk got <sighs> multiple delays. Uh, I mean, that game got delayed, I think, over a year in total. It did. And even with that, the game still came out just terrible. Yep. Um, and now we played through it, me and you personally. We had we had good PCs, so we were able to play through with no game-breaking bugs, just kind of annoying ones. Um, while other people who had either not-so-good PCs, or especially if they played on console, um, the game was almost unplayable. And, yeah. and when you would release a game in that state, <clears throat> like, you know, you know the games in that state because you have you have play testers right but you're getting pressure from both the gamers and um mostly your executives that want to make money right um they're all pressuring you to release the game so you know you're going to release a bad game and you're gonna have to try to fix it later now thankfully yeah i mean it's getting fixed now it's it's having a comeback in terms of reviews and stuff but the problem like you said shouldn't have been there from the start you should have just delayed it another six months and came out with a good product from the get-go rather than make gamers uh beta test your game for six months you know like that's that's not right either yeah no I, and and it, it's it's unfortunate um at the end of the day because like i mean that's just I, I think that's the just the state that we're we're in when it comes to gaming and, and i mean i guess kind of it's just a as a society as a whole with a lot of things but um yeah man it, it is it is rather is rather disappointing um and honestly like you even mentioned it with like halo like halo out of all of these highly anticipated releases that we saw you know this fall halo was was definitely one of the more hyped ones and um i know you're not a, a massive fan of it and to be quite honest neither am i but um it's just literally the ranked portion of it is the only thing that i enjoy because i just enjoy I enjoy grinding, and it gives me something to do. But when I get yeah. to Onyx, I'm just gonna. That's probably when I'm gonna stop playing the game. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. So like, I I, and I think like even that like it, it is. It's one of those games to where the game's very polished. It runs very well. Um, mm -hmm. the fucking tick rates are horrible on on the game. Um, I know you haven't played a ton of it, but like I think I've put probably about thirty hours into the game and um bro i'll never complain about warzone tick rate ever again yeah. I, I i think i honestly think it actually might be worse um, um yeah me, me and joe were playing uh the other day uh we were oh. playing some multiplayer oh i heard I yeah was, it was not a halo night no it was not a halo night uh, per <laughs> usual by the way um and as as me and joe are are diamond one ranks off the bat unlike you being a, a, a okay. gold four i believe okay you know, our, our I, is I, I was gold five and i am now diamond one so fuck I off i understand okay so now you're finally caught up to us after uh 30 hours it's fine anyway um i mean i i, I would take cover behind something and and i would the tick rate is so bad uh the server's catching up to it and i'm i'm getting shot through the cover as on the other guy's screen, I'd imagine I'm probably still running to it. So probably. it's uh, it's it's very disappointing in that sense. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's that I think that's honestly probably the most frustrating thing that I find about the game. That in in the fact that um playing ranked lobbies by yourself, um actually not even by yourself, even when you go in with a four man queue, um people leave so often. Um, and it's almost like there's just no penalty for it. Um, or at least it, it takes way too long for someone to get penalized for it. So it's just like, yeah, yeah. fuck it. Feel free. Um, now, fortunately, what's nice about it is, and again, this is what I liked about the ranked portion of the game, is that what's nice about it is that when that happens, if you're on the, the losing side, it doesn't affect your, your elo at all. Uh, and even if you're on the winning side, it still barely has any sort of effect on your on your elo um 
so it's almost like a like an even wash at that point. I actually also found out you could just straight up leave the game when that happens, and it you don't get penalized for it. Okay, um, interesting. Okay, yeah, that's a good thing. Right. Um, literally, I was I was playing it today on stream, and um, it was like my second game, and uh, oh, pretty much the entire enemy team left. It was just one dude who was a trooper, and I I applaud him for for sticking it out. <laughs> But, yeah um but yeah i i mean i i could i literally could have just left the game if i wanted to and and again it wouldn't have affected my elo but i was on the winning side so it uh, that'd be dumb um and but yeah it's just it happens so often and it's so frustrating i also found out another thing today um when it comes to the rank system that kind of made zero to no sense um actually i'm just it just made no sense uh so i was taking a look at some of the lobbies that of the enemy players that i was playing up against in one lobby i had and this was i was at i think i was at plat six at the time in one lobby i had um one guy was diamond six another guy was diamond two another guy was gold three and another guy was plat too. <laughs> like, like where? And I, and then I kept checking after every lobby after that, and that was a consistent theme. Nobody was even close to being in the same rank. I don't. Yeah. I don't understand that logic. Like, obviously the player base is there. Like, people are playing the game, so like you would think there's enough people to at least to play at your your rank. Yeah, I wonder if if it's uh. If it's a similar system, though, to like a Warzone or Call of Duty, where you have some people playing mouse and some people playing keyboard, and I wonder if it actually affects matchmaking with who you get paired with, um, because like if if it's gonna split the the player base based on okay, if if you're gonna use a controller, we're we're gonna try to match you against other controller players. Um, now even even with that though, you'd imagine there'd be enough players to get like at least people like all golds or all plats or whatever, um, but uh. I mean, it could also just be uh, just an early, an early bug type thing, you know, because yeah. at the end of the day, it's still considered a beta. That um, is true. So December 8th, 9th, whatever. Yeah, so out. Wednesday. Yeah. Um, so it, it could just be a matchmaking bug where they have to fix it, because obviously uh, the way the game is right now, there there is a lot of kind of bad bugs and, and, and problems that they're, you know, acknowledged, which is good. And, and yep. they're, they're going to fix in the future. Yep. So it it could just be another one of those, but uh, I I hear you though. It's it's a little frustrating if like if, especially if you were like a gold one, and you do and you get in a game and you're playing against high plats and 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 diamonds on the other team. It's like, well, this isn't exactly uh what I signed up for. Yeah, unless you're me to where you should have been in diamond to begin with, because I am dumpstering on on right. guys that are diamond six. Totally I, dude, it's showing. Go check the vod. It it is there. Mm -hmm. I'm what's showing, better. What's showing is your addiction to copium. That's what's showing. <laughs> God. All right. All right, well, man, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> um. So you and I, we 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 play as mentioned before. We play a ton of Call of Duty. Which, by the way, after this, I I want to I want to play Warzone. Uh, and and have a decent Verdance experience before it's gone. Um. Because like, I don't know if you heard. Happen, I don't. I don't. I don't know if you heard. Tomorrow they're they're actually shutting down the servers. So, uh, yeah, even, that makes sense. Not, not even gonna be map. able to play tomorrow. It's a lot of maintenance. I'm assuming. Yeah, new map, anti cheat coming, all that fun stuff. Oh, um, the anti cheat. Oh God, I'm so happy, man. <laughs> same. Um, but uh, but anyway, so um, you know, you and I, we play a, a ton of Call of Duty. Have you know, for a large majority of our lives, it's something that we you know we talk about quite often. Um, yeah, we're, we're basically pro players. Pretty much. Um, with um, Modern Warfare, I mean, that, that was definitely the game, and, you know, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but that was definitely the game that kind of got us back into Call of Duty. Yeah, I mean, it was it was so much better, I think, than, like, any Call of Duty we've had recently that it just, I think it got a lot of people back in the COD. Absolutely. I mean, there's no question. Because, I, I mean, I, it, Call of Duty definitely had a bit of a low point. Um, you know, with its its various releases. Um so that brings me to my question. I mean, do you think that Activision, Blizzard, you know, whoever 
Um, do you think that they should continue this trend of releasing a Call of Duty every single year? Because rumor has it, apparently that's no longer happening. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's lots of pros and cons to it, right? Um, I, th- I think as an overall, it would probably be a good thing, uh, especially for the quality of the games going forward. Because, um, I mean, at that point, if you skip a year, you'd be giving what four years of development per per team at that point yeah that that yeah. math that math might be off maybe it's three and a half instead of four i don't know so well, yeah but, but uh, close enough yeah so of course giving dev teams uh six months or 12 months extra development time uh i mean they could they could obviously polish the game a lot more so th- there's a big positive in that um the issue is or the biggest con especially when it comes to like some people like me and you who are uh critical of bad games <sighs> if like can you can you imagine, right? If Cold War came out and we were stuck with it for two years, could you imagine? <sighs> that, I, mean, I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't play Call of Duty at all. At that that, point. that just hurt my heart to think about. Yeah. <laughs> Cold War for two years. I mean, dude, like, what a way to kill your franchise. Um, so yeah, I mean, that would be the biggest con. Would be if if there's a Call of Duty that comes out that you're not exactly a fan of. Uh, you're you're literally stuck with it for two whole years with updates and stuff, um, and there's nothing you can do about it until the next one comes out, and then hopefully that next one is uh, is good. Otherwise, you're going to have four years of just depression. So, <laughs> fair, fair point. <laughs> yeah, I, but at the same token, I mean, does so? I mean, like, like let's say Cold War for example, or even Vanguard. Are those games as bad as they are? If if given more time to to develop, though, at that point, uh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, we had the rumor. I mean, rumors. It's pretty much confirmed that both Cold War and Vanguard were like rushed out the wazoo. Yep. Um, and so they kind of like they reused a lot of stuff, right? They they uh they didn't come out with, with the quality that they wanted to. Um, but I don't know much. I believe that because I mean, the last I mean since Black Ops Two, every Treyarch game in my opinion has been uh kind of kind of doo-doo right i agree and um uh man who made, who made vanguard I'm, I'm blinking sledgehammer sledgehammer uh, i mean they needed help from like every studio in order to finish the game in time yeah i rumor had it that like uh apparently their original concept got scrapped and then they were going to come out with mw2 remastered because it was like that bad um but yep. then that's when uh treyarch got involved and you know and and helped try to develop the game um which explains why it's not that great <laughs> uh yeah probably yeah the Vanguard <laughs> being bad is probably Treyarch's fault let's be honest probably um probably but uh yeah like um I mean there's I mean they would have benefited of course uh, but, but the issue again is like if if you give extra time and then the games come out and they're still exactly the same uh which let's be honest they probably would be uh, I mean, people would just get, I think, upset about it because it's like you're we're giving extra time, right? And gamers are waiting an extra year now per Call of Duty, but they're still coming out uh, like this with like no real changes. I think that's why Modern Warfare was so successful and that it kind of at least changed uh, Call of Duty in a good way in terms of they made it darker. Oh, absolutely. They made the gameplay a lot deeper. It felt like shooting in Modern Warfare feels so good, right? It's so Compared smooth. to like... Uh, Cold War, like Cold War shooting, just feels it feels like a Call of Duty game, right? Yeah. But it, it, Cold but, War shooting feels like it's from 2006. Yeah, it, it's it's bad. <laughs> it's, it's it's all bad, and the guns suck, and everything takes too long to kill. And yeah, yep. but Modern Warfare, uh, time to kill was quick. It, it felt like your guns had impact, yep. and um, it almost felt like you were playing uh, like Battlefield Four, almost. Like maybe I'm wrong, but it, it felt like the guns felt like they were from a different game altogether. Yeah, which I think is what people would expect. If you decided to um, to do like a a bi yearly release type thing, yeah, no, that I mean that's 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 definitely fair, um, and I and I think again, man, I think as a whole, like it, it it makes sense to go to the route of hey, let's give our let's give our teams more time to work on these games because, like you said, like I think it can create a new feeling every single year and I touched on it before like Call of Duty is very much just that copy and paste feel um, 
which is more of a recent thing than I think, you know, more than anything. Like you go back to when COD 4 was first released and when Black Ops 1 was released and um, even all the way up to pretty much all the way up until like Advanced Warfare, you know, Black Ops 4. Um, that I mean, should even throw World War II in there. Um, you know, the, the games up to that point didn't have that feeling because you had different devs working on their own versions of Call of Duty. So each game had its own feel. Granted, were some of them good? No, they were a lot of them were pretty bad. Um, mostly Treyarch. Yep. Mostly Treyarch. Um, although, I, I mean, and, and I, we've had this discussion too. It, Infinite Warfare is one of the worst Call of Duties ever. Yeah, good was, campaign though. Great campaign. But the yeah, multiplayer really was so fucking bad. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. That was that was a very odd year for Infinity Ward. We just we just kind of yeah. forget it ever happened. Yeah, true, true. That's actually very accurate. I don't ever hear anyone ever talk about uh, Infinity Warfare. No, but we had to wait a COD Four Remastered that year though too, and most people we were did. playing that anyway. So well, we they they had to give us COD Four Remastered because if they didn't, I I mean that literally might have been the end of Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, so I you know I think. It, I think Modern Warfare, like you said, I think Modern Warfare brought in like this this new, this rejuvenation of Call of Duty, and, and like you said, it brought so many more people back to the game, and um, you know, including you and I, and um, and I think Warzone has helped take Call of Duty and bring it to a, a whole new stratosphere, um, which is nuts to say because I mean, there's always those people. To where they treat it, treat it like Madden. To where, like you know, they're they're gonna buy the new Call of Duty every single year because it's Call of Duty. It. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, that was me, like as a as a kid. I mean, no matter, like yeah. you know, every, every Christmas per se. I mean, I'd yeah. I'd get the new COD as a yeah. present, right? I, I didn't have to ask. It was, it was just kind of a thing. And it, it, yeah. I think it's it's for a lot of people. But now, as adults, we have our own money. We have to make financial decisions i mean I, uh, I mean me and you almost skipped the vanguard we didn't because we're terrible spenders <laughs> i was gonna say we have to make financial <laughs> decisions but we make horrible financial decisions so yeah terrible terrible <laughs> awful ones and we were like yeah man we're gonna skip vanguard fuck that game man we gotta show them what's up we gotta start you know uh showing them with our wallets right and then of course <laughs> day of release uh we're both playing the game right so it, that didn't work out no. but and, and it, you know what the issue is the biggest issue is Warzone because as good as Warzone yep. is, or how good it can be, yep. um, it number one killed Call of Duty in terms of its competitive aspect. Um, 100%. Like the six v six multiplayer mode, like that's 100%. Dead. it's it's yep. completely dead. Yeah, and um, that they have a new competitive Warzone now, which is kind of cool, but um, not everyone likes battle royales. Um, I'm okay on them. I, I I like Warzone. I think the most at this point out of any other battle royale, oh, other absolutely. than maybe Prime PUBG, right? Yeah, but. Um, yeah, the issue is when, when they release a new COD now, now that it's all connected and, uh, and everything you want to unlock in a multiplayer is unlocked in, in Warzone, it's, it's another incentive to buy the game because yeah. now, like, I, I don't have to spend a hundred hours worth of Warzone to level up a weapon, right? Cause it's, it, you're not going to get that many kills with it per game versus I can just pop a few double XPs in multiplayer and spend an hour maxing it out. And and I'm good in Warzone. Yep. And I think that they obviously plan that. And I think Call of Duty is going forward. People will just straight up buy them because um, it'll just be an easier time unlocking stuff in in Warzone, which is what they're going to play anyway. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Like I, I think I think I mean it's a genius idea from from Activision at that point. You really can't uh, can't fault them for it. Um, like oh, no, that. No fault. I mean, it's 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 a good business decision. It yep. it just it just affects uh, the multiplayer uh, in a negative way. A hundred percent. Because because now literally the only reason to to buy Call of Duty. I mean, hell, literally the reason why you and I both bought Vanguard is to upgrade those weapons because you know they're going to be coming to Warzone and you know they're yep. going to be the meta weapons. It's the same reason why I bought Cold War. Like literally, we played the beta. I will never forget this experience. We when we first played the beta, those first like two hours, we we're like, dude, this is actually kind of fun. Like this is really yeah. good. And then it just went completely downhill. So every, much so. 
every next game we played, it <laughs> just got a, a more negative and negative attitude toward the game. Dude, it got so bad to the point where I literally threw shit across my room. Like, that was how pissed off the game was making me. Yeah, if I had a disc, I would have broke it. <laughs> True. It would have been Which Madden 19. All my games digital now. It would have been Madden 19 all over again. <laughs> All right. To be fair, it's not as bad as Madden 19. That game is <laughs> yeah, that a was bad. Trash bin. That was bad. Madden 21 is not much better, but Madden 19. The, the linebackers in Madden 19 all <sighs> all would have won MVP. Every single one from every team. <laughs> oh man! Greatest athletes in the history of mankind. The Literally. linebackers. From they're they're, they're jumping 12 feet in the air and and <laughs> picking me off uh, before I even let go of the ball. Yep. Yep. Oh God, that was that was, that that was probably one of the most infuriating Maddens I think I've ever played. Yeah, that was it was interesting. Madden twenty was close though with with how often you'd fumble the ball. Um, that one that one was close. But, yeah, and that all comes down to sliders and stuff, which are always yeah, very inconsistent. Yeah, but but any I digress. We're getting a little off topic, but um, yeah, man, I I think I think I think the game as a whole would definitely benefit. Uh, or the franchise as a whole would definitely benefit from from going to you know a biannual release. I don't think it should go any further than like a biannual release. Like I think releasing one every no. three years would be that, that's too much. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I do think that does mean like if so if you go the biannual route, I mean you have to do more with Warzone at that point. Like waiting two years to get a new map, um, like you just you can't do that. The little events that they do in the game have always been very lackluster. Yep. Um, and again, same thing. You can't do that either. Like I, I think to to do that and and go the biannual route, it'll it'll be the downfall of the game. You know, all over again. Um, I mean, I I think about how much Warzone I've played over the past two months. Very little. It's it's been mostly me playing Vanguard the week it came out. A lot of Halo, oddly enough, I would have never expected that. Um, yeah, me either. Yeah, <laughs> and then, um, and then it's a good rank just, system though, which you know, phenomenal rank system, and that's the only reason why I keep playing it. Yeah, um, which is why Call of Duty should add it because pe- people who don't normally like Warzone would probably play it more just because I they agree. level up. I agree. Um, and then because also at the, I mean the end old the 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 topic of discussion that'll never fucking end. Skill based matchmaking is a horrible idea, especially when there's no ranked system. So just add a fucking ranked system at that point. Yeah, skill based matchmaking is not is not it, and I don't know why the Call of Duty devs don't yeah. like they they aren't listening to people with that. It's it's very odd. Um, but but yeah, uh, and then uh, you know, and then and then me just playing various you know other games at that point to fill time and uh. And yeah, man, like I think, you know, again, if you go the biannual route, you got to do more at Warzone. You, know, you got to keep up with it. You got to be more innovative rather than doing these really basic changes every two months. You know, every time a new season comes out, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's because again, it's that copy and paste formula of every season, you know what to expect. Like, oh, we're going to add some freaking like crashed satellite thing here there's a random truck on the map now um here's a new vehicle that means absolutely nothing to you here's some really broken weapons for two weeks and then we're just gonna nerf the shit out of them um again and and a new gulag that is never good um (laughs) it's just it's just the same formula just over and over and over and over again um and one idea they could do oh go ahead finish I was gonna say again, if you if you go the biannual route, you just you just can't do that. Yeah, well, one one idea they could do, um, they could tell me how you feel would be like, uh, we had the rumor of Mono Alpha Two remastered. What yep. if on that off year, you you remaster one of your old games, right, or like just the multiplayer of it, or just the campaign of it? Well, probably not the campaign. I don't think anyone would really like that, but maybe you you remaster the multiplayer of old games or even remake them, um. And release those by yearly, and you use whatever devs would be the farthest point away from their next COD. So at this point, uh, Sledgehammer just came out with theirs. So it would be, it would be Sledgehammer now, 
working on the off year COD. Um, so they would say remaster MW2 multiplayer, and they would uh, release that a year from now when there wouldn't be a new Call of Duty. Um, and then they just keep going it that way. Then a year after that, you have the new one, so on and so forth. I like it. Um, you know, I mean, I think, I think at that point, it definitely, excuse me, it definitely allows the the Call of Duty fan base to stay engaged with the the game, especially if they end up reaching that that lull with it. Um, the only issue at that point is that you fall into the trap of once again devs and publishers just trying to make money off of nostalgia um although again people have wanted a modern warfare 2 multiplayer remastered for so long at this point um i, I mean that i would play the shit out of that non-stop for literally months on end yeah that game would be huge but you think back to COD 4 Remastered, when the multiplayer came out for that, I played it maybe a month and a half. Um, and even then, it was like two-hour sessions, like here and there. And then I just stopped playing. Like, yeah, it was cool. It felt fun. It was nostalgic. But like after so long, I just I got bored. And so again, I think you fall into the traps where, like you said, Warzone is kind of killed that 6v6 you know shooter experience um and i think like yeah like again the devs the publishers you know it, it, they're they're gonna get their money but as a player as a fan you're not really gonna get the ultimate experience so it's really only gonna kill time for just that little bit of uh, you know that short period of time and then you're just gonna move on and you know, go play something else. Yeah, there there is that where it probably wouldn't even last a year in terms of just overall content of people playing it. Um I mean another thing they could they they would could consider would be like a, a big war zone expansion like during that off year. But at that point, what do you what do you even do with it? Like a new map every year? I mean that might get kind of old I think. Uh it depends on how much you do with that new map. Because like yeah. if you take the approach that they did with for Dansk and all they did was just go back in time, uh, then yes, that will very much get old. Yeah, I mean, it was literally a reskin. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's all it was. Which, at first, I was all for it, and then after so long, I was like, okay, it plays the same exact way, so who cares? Um, But then... With worse lighting. <laughs> somehow with worse lighting. I don't even know how that's possible. Um... But, but yeah, so, like, I, I think, you know, so you would have to, you could definitely do the new map uh, every year at that point. Um, and, and maybe not get rid of the old map at that point. Because if Verdansk as a whole is a well-designed map, um, I think, again, I mean, we're talking, it's been two years or you know, almost two years of playing yeah, on that map. People, people have played it, yeah, for two years. And, you know, overall, I think it's, it's, it's liked, obviously, a lot. So. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I think you've reached the point where everything could really be done with it, you know, not only as a player, but even from a creative side of things. Um, so, you know, at this point, it's like, OK, what what can you really do? Um, but like when with Caldera coming out, like, dude, I actually I'm, I'm probably going to miss as much as Caldera is, is going to be insane. And I think I'm going to love it because um, it looks nuts. Um, I, I think I genuinely think I'm actually going to miss uh for dance a little bit um uh, definitely certain aspects for sure like mm -hmm. landing uh landing parking yeah uh our our, our it's like a, basically a religion for us at this point at uh, this point yeah <laughs> yeah like uh trying to find a, a, a new location stuff like that and you know like you'll never get that again type thing so yep yep and, and so like yeah, that's the thing like i think i think if again you go the route to where that that off year maybe bring in a new map don't get rid of the old map i do think you should just get rid of rebirth altogether i which i mean that's a hot topic is like or a hot take i should say because uh, rebirth is beloved by many i don't understand why um yeah, it's all right. i i love i love the concept of the mode but the map i think is dog shit 
Um, so, you know, I think I think maybe you get rid of that or like get rid of plunder, so then that way you can keep the old map. Or I mean, just have better servers, so then that way you don't got to get rid of anything. True, um, you just have both of them in there. <laughs> wow, imagine that. I know, crazy concept. Wow, crazy Let concept. People queue the map they want. Holy shit! Dude, no way. <laughs> Um, I mean, shit. If if a broken S game like PUBG can do it, I think uh, I think a multi billion dollar company can can handle that. Yeah, I'd say yeah. <laughs> but uh, speaking of Call of Duty and speaking of uh, you know Modern Warfare and and all that stuff to kind of continue the topic. So uh, the next Call of Duty is rumored to be um pretty much confirmed at this point. Um, Modern Warfare Two. Yeah, which makes sense because that's the way the story was going in the in the single player. Hundred percent. Um, give me uh, give me your thoughts. What's your uh, your expectations? What what are you are you excited about it? What's your your take? Yeah, uh, genuinely excited for it. Um, because Modern Warfare twenty nineteen is, uh, I think probably a top three COD all time for me. And um, so having that expectation top three. Yeah, it's. I was thinking back on it. It's. It's. It. I liked it a lot. I thought the gameplay was super solid. It's a, a um, phenomenal game. Very underrated. Yeah, I mean the maps. Uh, so some were great. Some were uh, not great. Yeah, uh, th- didn't have the best maps compared to some past CODs. But if, if we're uh-huh. just talking about raw gameplay and like pacing in matches, uh, yeah, I think it's. I think I think I can I can consider it top three. Okay. Um, uh. That that expectation for Modern Warfare Two is is very high, especially the last two CODs have been basically just bad or yeah. below average, and um, so kind of itching for a good COD again um, that you could like enjoy the multiplayer where you don't just have to play Warzone, um, and uh, and I think campaign wise it'll be great. Of course, it'll be interesting. If if it's basically just a COD four campaign like remade type thing, or if they're actually going to do uh, like a slight prequel to that, uh, and we and we see some of the some of the stuff that went on that we didn't see, or like some maybe some before like certain time skips in the original campaign, we'll we'll see that stuff in action. But I think uh, I think a lot of people are excited for it, and I think Infinity Ward has definitely proved that they're the most competent Call of Duty developers. So I think a lot of people are expecting the game to be good which could be a negative because if the game doesn't come out good then it's going to get shit on uh yeah so it's yeah uh it'll, it'll be interesting i i think it'll be good i hope it'll be good but uh but who really knows you know yeah i i mean i i'm uh i'm definitely excited for it i, I think it's gonna be um i honestly think it's gonna be a good time you know i mean infinity ward they they rarely ever miss when it comes to making at the very least, even just a decent game. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Modern Warfare 2, the original, um, is is my favorite Call of Duty of all time. Um, and, yeah, and probably just, I probably agree with you. I, I mean, that's just absolutely S tier when it comes to Call of Duties. And, uh, you know, so this has me so excited because honestly it's probably the closest thing we're going to get to a, a remaster of that game um at least so, a while ago. so we're obviously going to see a lot of uh, a lot of those classic maps like terminal for example which everybody's been asking to put <laughs> into a call of duty for such a long time um Ooh. like terminal is just an, uh, one of those iconic maps and um and you There's know another thing too there's so much they can do. And and another thing too is that like so a lot of people, which I, I saw a thing to where like a lot of people would obviously want some of those classic perks and classic weapons, which uh there was a an article that came out that uh, apparently they are not going to be bringing back a lot of those, you know, perks and weapons, stuff like the uh the ACR and um one man army and, and things of that nature. Um which is probably a good thing, um, and because at that positive. point, at that point, you could you could build your own game. You know what I mean? So that way, it's not necessarily a remaster, uh, similar to like Modern Warfare 2018, where you bring in your own these these new weapons for people to to love and get used to. 
um like i remember when modern warfare came out um the the m4 was like i mean that was the meta weapon that was the gun that everyone was using um for the longest time um and i mean shit people are still using it even to this day in in warzone um yeah, best gun it, it, maybe. it is a great gun um but then at the same time you can go the the route or the method that they've been doing with uh or they did with cold war and um to where you know it, with these new seasons with the battle passes bring in some classic guns that we've seen in in past games and um and so i think you could potentially see stuff like the acr come back maybe even see something like the, the you know the intervention which but that's that's caught for right interventions mw2 that's mw that is mw2 right yeah, so like the, maybe the bring, m40 was the was the that's right, that's right that's right that's right that's right um you know so yes maybe bring in the intervention which i obviously so many people would love to see that um yeah, that'd, be, that'd be big yeah you know what i mean so like there's there's a lot of potential you know for for things you could do there um in terms of that so i think early on i think i think it, it's a smart approach of hey let's build our own game and then bring in some of that nostalgia with various maps from the mw2 days and you know maybe some various guns mm -hmm. i think perk wise maybe just keep it to the same perks that we've seen in in modern warfare um not so much vanguard because some of the perks in vanguard are broken um but you know at, at the very least modern warfare um because I, I think overall i think the perks in modern warfare are pretty solid minus the wall hack perk i mean that that was which i realize is just a war zone thing but like no um <laughs> yeah I, I don't know i still don't know what they were thinking with that I, I don't yeah really uh that was that was their way to to combat cheating <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty much more cheating yeah pretty pretty much um but uh but yeah man so I, I think again i think i think it's a smart move i think it's it's a it's a good move if that is ultimately the route that they go um but man yeah overall i'm really excited i will say as somebody you and i are probably two of the very few people in the world who actually play the the call of duty campaigns um <laughs> i don't understand how what you do with the story for this like um it it doesn't yeah. it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, uh, yeah, because I mean, Modern Warfare 2019 it, it literally ended off like right before COD Four, right? Where he was where he was building the team, right. uh, and that's when um, uh, Soap gets you know you start playing as him in COD Four, right? Um, yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I mean, you you can uh, basically just uh, remake and make a more detailed COD Four campaign, but at that point, people would be like. Oh, what the recycling content again, right? So like, right. people wouldn't like that. But like, I think you could do a thing where during the COD Four campaign, there's time skips between each, or like small ones between each uh, each scenario. Uh, I I think you could maybe show some missions that obviously you didn't get to play, like like behind the scenes missions, uh, and, and you and you play those instead, maybe that that lead up to it, uh, and then maybe get like COD Four references or like story progression and stuff like that. But then at that point, you question um, who the main villain will be. Uh, yeah, like what, what what would the plot even be at that point? Like, yeah. it, it, it would be fragmented. So yeah, who knows? Uh, maybe they'll completely remake the story. Um, it, it it'll be interesting. I, I don't know how they're gonna handle the campaign. Yeah, I I mean, cause you can't really do. I now I, correct me if I'm wrong, because I mean it's been so long, but um, you can't really do like that. You can't do a prequel because the way COD Four ends, it just it, it it's pretty much a straight transition into the Modern Warfare Two campaign or the beginning of it, I should say. Actually, it's um, not. Um, is it not? Because uh, at the end of COD Four. You were private soap, and he and then he's a captain in MW two. So to get from private to captain, I, that that's a lot of time. Then right? I mean, am I crazy? No, you're not. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah. So unless they just gave him captain after taking out one of the biggest terrorists in the world, fair that's, enough. They might. They right. Might have. That's my thought. Right. Um. 
But if they didn't, yeah, I mean, there definitely could be a at least a few years between COD Four and Modern Warfare Two, where maybe you could introduce another another villain that's not Makarov, um, and and go after him. Maybe even from a different country. Like I mean, you don't have to do Russia, right? Right. But uh, yeah, I I I I, I don't know. That that'll be somebody that has to look up or something. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that. Yeah, because otherwise, I I don't know. I don't know how you do it. Like, I don't know how you could potentially do like maybe maybe you do something to where like you're just this whole other person that we haven't seen in the COD universe yet. Um, that's part of General Shepard's team. Uh oh, interesting. Um Yeah, maybe. Oh, you know what? Yeah, you, they could do something uh on, on Shepard's side where yeah. Yeah, because Shepard Shepherd was obviously around, uh, even though we didn't see him in COD Four. Um, right. Yeah, you, you you can get his his side of things. What he was doing, I'm sure he was he he was obviously still probably probably tasked with with taking out uh, the Russians at that point. So you can right, get, uh, like obviously there had to be something going on for him to become a general and shit. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a really cool idea actually, because they can get more. Because a Shepard, I mean, as big of a piece of shit as he is, um, he was a good character and uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, getting more of his side would be would be cool. Maybe seeing some of the more effed up things he did to 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 win yeah. and, and shit like that. That'd be that'd be really interesting. Hey, yo, Infinity Ward, hit me up. I I think I just came up with a brilliant idea. Um, hmm, damn, that just I, I just pleased myself with that one. Yeah, we uh, that is uh, officially licensed by. Me and Dave, uh, Infinity Ward, Activision, if you want to contact us, our DMs are open. And, uh, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Oh, shit. Uh, before we get into the next discussion, because um, I realize we've already been talking for almost an hour, <laughs> um, have to bring up the other sponsor, the other partner of the channel, uh, Humble Bundle. Humble Bundle. Humble Bundle. Um, Humble Bundle. It's a wonderful website. Um that is uh that gives you all kinds of various discounts on games and uh, even books and and comics and things of that nature which is actually kind of dope and even softwares um and they do it in multiple ways they do it to where you just buy them outright you could do it through a monthly subscription uh called uh humble choice um it's where they have various packages that you get every month there's always like a theme to each one um and what's really cool about it is that Humble Bundle, you know, they're not just trying to take your money and, and run. Uh, a lot of the money that they get from their sales and from the subscriptions actually goes to charity. Um, what's cool about if you hit the link down below and you support the channel, you could actually designate how much money goes to me, how much money goes to Humble Bundle, and how much money actually goes to charity, um, which is a, a really, really cool thing. So check out the link down below, support the channel, buy yourself some really cool games. Please and thank you. I love uh, Humble Bundle. I love Humble Bundle. I See, love I it. Love it. Love it. Dude, you're already doing better than Greg when it comes to uh talking about the sponsors. Literally on the on the on the podcast last time, he's talking about uh, a, a streamer that he met that <laughs> that makes like emotes and stuff, and I guess that, that person made his emotes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, or instead of hitting them up, you could hit up own3d.tv. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Uh, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so, Mr. Mister Lambert, uh, you and I, we are both uh, proud owners of the uh, of the PS5. Um, I'll still never forget the night that the pre-orders first went live, and I stayed up till 3 a.m., and you managed to get it in 15 minutes. Um, yeah, you got unlucky. <laughs> um, got unlucky on every fucking website. It was annoying. Um, still got but it though. Still got it though. I still got it. Still got it. But um, again, you and I both, uh, you know, massive fans of of what Sony does and, and all their exclusives. And um, I'm sure you saw this because we may or may not have already prepped for this. Um, <laughs> um, PlayStation slash Sony. Um, they're uh, reportedly set to launch their own uh game pass quote unquote version um come come next year um that is gonna have 
uh, a lot of classics from you know, PS1, PS2, PS3, uh, and apparently even PSP games, um, or days, I should say, uh, as well as, you know, of course, PS4 and PS5 um, stuff on there, uh, like we've seen with Xbox Game Pass. Um, right. What do you think, man? Do you think that's a smart move? Do you think uh, going the route of this whole subscription-based gaming makes sense? Do you think it's good for the consumer? You think it's a bad idea? What's what's your take? Uh, I, I think it's a great thing overall. Um, not just in terms of Sony, but um, I mean, what Microsoft has done with Game Pass is um, kind of crazy. Like when they first announced it, everyone's like, "Oh, that's that's kind of weird, right?" But um, I mean, it has it has it has literally turned into kind of a steal at at, at uh fifteen bucks a month or whatever it is. Um, just the the, the quality of games you get on there consistently is insane plus new exclusives um that come out on on microsoft's end like that's uh i mean each one of those games are gonna cost you 60 bucks but if you can even get uh two of those a year uh, i think that that basically just pays for the sub itself um plus on top of the hundreds of other stuff uh, of, of other games that are included in there that aren't just microsoft games by the way right yeah. um so if if sony could even if it's not the same level of value which i don't think it would be to be honest, I don't think Sony would let it be. Um, even if, like, the first tier at fifteen bucks a month gets you new PS Five exclusives, yep, uh, that's a good deal. Period. Because Sony comes out with a lot of ex- exclusives uh, constantly, right? Yeah. So just uh, just beginning of next year, um, there's Horizon coming out, right? So right. If, if you can get Horizon, which would be a sixty dollars game, or actually a seventy dollars. Yeah, games are seventy dollars now. What the yeah, hell are you bucks. talking about? Yeah. Jesus, man, yeah. uh, I'm broke. Anyway, <laughs> seventy bucks, uh, yeah, a free game uh, that you get to play as long as you sub. Um, yeah, some people don't like that, but I think it's a good deal when you think of the whole picture. Because if if you can get a hundred games in there for fifteen bucks a month plus exclusives, like Xbox is doing. Uh, and people will eat it up. I mean, people will absolutely 100%. eat it up. Uh, the and and obviously you're gonna have a situation where you have a ton of people who don't own a PC and don't own an Xbox who just own a PS5 or a PS4. Um, but they're not paying for Game Pass. Um, but they probably want to, to be honest. And I think Sony could build a ton of rev just off those people alone who only have a PS5. Uh, absolutely. So I think it'd be a good business thing for them. Um, and I think it'd be good for the gamer overall. Uh, I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. I think they should definitely do it. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think uh, we've touched on this in the past um, years ago at this point. Um, the whole, you know, subscription based gaming um, from a business sense, it, it makes a ton of sense to do. Um, cause the idea, I mean, you, you look at it from the sense of like, you know, sure. You're going to release a game at, you know, now $70. Um, but you get people to, to spend, you know, 10, $15 a month on your subscription that you just have all these games uploaded to, to a library and they're going to find all these other games that either are classics that they, that they loved playing back in the day or games that, are uh you know brand new that are coming out they're there they're available they get to try them out um or maybe even just other games that they've just never played and they want to play um it's you know it's it's one of those things it's gonna that's gonna be more enticing to people than them actually having to go out and buy each individual game all the time oh for sure um and then the hope as is the hope with every subscription based thing um the hope is they're just gonna keep their subscription going and and even if they don't use it they're just gonna forget about it kind of like a gym membership like it's gonna be one of those things to where like oh i'm gonna keep paying for it just in case i ever want to use it exactly it's it's there i don't have to go back into my building re-add it you know i'll just keep paying i have the money i'll just keep it going and then when i play something i play something exactly so like i I think it's one of those things to where you know it, it makes so much sense and even from a consumer perspective like you know again you look at what microsoft has done with game pass I and mean, game pass is so successful um because mm-hmm. of the value there's just so many games that are on there especially now with them you know acquiring bethesda um you know it, it, there's just so many games that are on there for you to be able to play and 
um, you know, that it, it, again, it makes it a no brainer. So I think Sony going with the same approach and it makes a hundred percent sense. And as you mentioned, like Sony has so many exclusives that they put out on a regular basis. Yeah. Very consistently. And, you know, a lot of them are, what's, what's nice about it is that a lot of them are single player experiences. Yep. Um, which is so rare nowadays. Yep. Very rare. And when you think about it, you, you signed up for Ubisoft's uh, subscription, whatever that's called, because I can't remember. Yep. Um, and you utilize that to play Far Cry 6. Yes. A whole 35 minutes of it. I was going to say, you played it for 35 minutes and then you were done. Yep. So what's nice from a consumer lens is that you, did you even pay for the Ubisoft thing or did you get a free trial? Uh, You get a free trial, I think, the first time you do it. I, I got it in the past. So That's right, that's right. I had to pay, I had to pay 15 bucks. Right, so yeah. you paid 15 bucks to discover that you didn't like Far Cry 6. Which I think is worth it compared to if I spent 70 on the game and I didn't like it, right? Bingo. And so from a consumer lens, it makes so much more sense, especially when it comes to those single player experiences to where a lot of times they don't have a lot of replay value. So you're going to spend, let's say, 15 bucks a month to get those single player experiences. And then when you're done, maybe you move on to another single player experience that, again, you're only spending $15 a month rather than spending $70 or even 50 or 40 when they go down in value on that game. And then yeah, essentially exactly. never getting your value back from it. That's exactly what I did with uh, with EA Play. I wanted to play the remastered Mass Effect stuff. I was like, well, I don't want to spend 60 bucks on games I've played uh, five times each, right? Yep. Paid 15 bucks for the month, played through the first two, uh, got really lazy, didn't play the third, <laughs> bought another month, that. <laughs> still didn't play it, bought another month, still didn't play it, and I know spending 60 bucks anyway, so here I am. <laughs> I but ideally, I, I would have beat it all in the first month. <laughs> And uh, and that would have been a fantastic value. Uh, except yeah. I'm an idiot, so I didn't yep. do that. I I remember that it goes back to to talking about how we make great financial decisions. Yeah, I spent, uh, spent forty five dollars <laughs> uh, to not own the game. So yeah, yep. that's where I'm at. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> but but yeah. So like again, I think um, I think it makes great sense. I think it's a great business decision. Um, you know, especially to compete with you know, Microsoft, um, and, and continue to kind of maybe even have an edge over them. Um, I mean, shit, they could even just copy Microsoft's formula. Um, they literally could, yeah. And, and I'm sure it will be perfectly okay. And, and, you know, and, and literally they won't even have to tweak it for 15 bucks a month. They could throw in all those, you know, all the classics, throw in all the new releases and stuff, maybe include PlayStation plus, maybe, maybe even make that 20, you know what I mean? Whatever. Yeah. Um, and again, just make it worth the time, make it worth that that experience. Yeah, it's, it says um, that they're doing a tiered approach, right? Like a three tier approach. I'm Correct. assuming with like the, the highest tier, uh, maybe you get you also get PlayStation Plus included with that. Like that'd be really cool. I'd imagine and one yeah. other thing they could do. They, they, they could treat it. Um, obviously, it's a game subscription, but they could treat it like a show subscription like Netflix and, and Disney Plus, where Disney Plus has that whole package where you can get uh, was it Disney uh espn and, and disney and espn things. plus and hulu right yeah you you get that all for a certain amount of of money i mean yep. if if sony wanted to uh I mean, nobody plays for you play plus because it, it's an awful deal because all of you play uh ubisoft games have been pretty bad so sure. they could they could partner with ubisoft right let's say instead of charging 15 on top of their playstation uh game pass you uh add an extra 10 bucks so you're saving five bucks off of the you play one and you you uh you bundle it right so you have a playstation game pass plus uh you play plus bundle stuff like that like they could definitely look into doing that because ea kind of already did that with uh with game pass a bit right so it'd be cool if sony could match that with another big uh uh big publisher that puts out a lot of games to sort of add value to their to their uh their game pass version that's not a bad idea no, uh, that's that's solid. But the only issue there, and, and part of the reason why it works with um with like the Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN Plus thing is because they're technically all p a part of one corporation. Yeah. Where Ubisoft and Sony are obviously two different companies. Yeah, there um, there would have to be a, a timed partnership on that. Yeah, so I mean that's that's the only difficult part of that. Um, but no, I mean definitely a great idea on on paper though. 
Um, yeah. Or Sony just swings their balls around and buys uh, buys Ubisoft. Screw it. <laughs> true. It's true. Um, I mean, it would definitely make Ubisoft's games better. That's for damn sure. For sure, for sure. <laughs> but anything would make their games better. Yeah, shit, man. At this point, it's rough. It's it's rough. But except that they sponsor us, I love Ubisoft games. I love them. <laughs> I, I love uh, Ubisoft games. Yeah, games yep. Are... Yep. Hey, man, you you want to throw me throw me some money? I will play your games every single day. If that's yeah. that's what I got to do. I I loved Far Cry Six. It was great. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, Mr. Lambert. Um, try to bring things to a closing end. As you know, I, I end these podcasts with um, the question of, you know, who who is your favorite streamer and uh, or streamers and uh, and why? So, uh, Mr. Lambert, first off, I got to tell you, I've been staring at at your profile picture for over an hour now, and it I I laugh every time I look at it. Um, yeah, understandably so. Yeah, it's 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 tough for me to focus. Um, <laughs> and you, um, so yeah, so who, who's uh, who are some of your favorite streamers, and uh, and why? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too too big into into watching. Uh, I guess actually, I I haven't been big into watching uh, streams in general because I found them just, um just slightly less enjoyable than just watching whatever YouTube video would inevitably come about from it, right? Yeah, I feel that. Um, but as of late, uh, I like them a lot, and 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 by far, um, XQC is for sure my favorite streamer. Um, and it's gotten to a point, I've almost spoiled myself with him because it's it's almost to a point where I find XQC so entertaining that it's it's tough to find other streamers entertaining, right? Like, Doc is funny. Tim is funny. Uh, and Doc's pr- production value is fantastic, right? Best uh, best in class. Hands and down. XQ- XQCs is probably the worst. Uh, hands down. <laughs> but uh, but XQC averages, uh, you know, 70 to 100K per stream at any given time. Yep. And, and, and the reason isn't because of his production quality. No. Uh, it's because of how entertaining he is as just a person, genuinely, right? Yep. So getting someone that no matter what he does uh, you're you're laughing um and having a good time and kind of forgetting about uh, uh your other issues right um it's very valuable so yeah i've been watching xqc uh pretty much every time he goes live i get excited about it that's a good feeling i think yeah um so yeah i, I would yeah xqc by far uh a, a smaller one uh channel is called to's game i've been watching him since uh, since COD 4 came out, uh, he's been a content creator and he streams now. And um, that's more of a, like a personal one. I wouldn't say he's like as entertaining as SQC because I would sure. be lying. But um, just having watched him my entire childhood, uh, you know, it, it's just a, a comfortable thing to watch type thing. So. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, X, X is just, yeah, he's, he's phenomenal. Uh, just about everything he does is is just it's hilarious. The gaming, the gaming warlord himself, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's he's just fucking awesome. Um, I, what what's uh what's your thoughts on uh on Ludwig signing with uh with with YouTube? Uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's good for both parties. Um, Ludwig obviously gets a bag, and uh, and then he gets I think he I think he said um slightly less hours uh, yes. to have to fulfill during his his contract which is yep. good because that gives him more time to you know spend time outside of stream which is always a healthy thing i think for streamers yep. um yeah I, I think youtube is making really smart decisions on who they're signing um i think ludwig yeah, ludwig was always a very consistent streamer and he'll probably yeah. lose some viewers going to youtube as as what usually happens but i think he'll still maintain a, a very high level of, of viewership because um, Ludwig is also kind of just he's 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 genuinely a good person and he's fun to watch. Yeah, so um, far he's actually getting like the, uh, the I mean I know he got banned already, but so far he's actually getting the the same level of, of viewership that he's getting on Twitch. Like he was always averaging anywhere between like twenty and forty k, um, yeah. and AC's still floating around that. 
yeah, I don't know if you saw, but he um he's been he's uh right now he's uh experimenting with the content ID system uh, on YouTube. So he he'll actually play a copyrighted song in the background of his streams now, and he'll see how long it takes his stream to get suspended, and he'll restart it again, and he'll have like the exact second timer on how long it took his stream to get auto brought down. Uh, I thought that was it happened three times already. I, I think it's very That's, interesting that he's, he's dude, willing to do that. That is what's so great about Ludwig. Like, like people talk when it comes to streaming. Like people talk about, like you know, hey, it's so difficult to become sex, successful in, in streaming and being a content creator, and uh, it's so difficult to grow on YouTube and on on Twitch because there's so many people doing it, and like you already have all the all the millionaires who are grandfathered into it. I think you see someone like Ludwig who is was only on Twitch for like three years and and grew to to the level that he is at now. Um and he did it mostly through through YouTube, honestly, just YouTube videos. He what makes him so great is that he understands the business better than I think really I, I think the only person that understands the whole content creating thing better than him would be Mr. Beast. Um, because yep. obviously, again, Mr. Beast is nuts when it comes to that stuff. Um, yeah, for sure. But like, like he understand like that idea. That's a brilliant fucking idea. Like, hey, yeah. let me see how long it takes for my band or for my stream to get shut down. Yeah, he he has a very high IQ when it comes to content creation in general, and like, you know, when to post, how to post. Um, he said that he created that secret channel, and yep. he he got millions of views off of that too. So. Yep. Um, definitely if you're, if you're someone who's willing to, I don't want to say take advantage of, but, um, that's another way to put take advantage of, uh, like you, I don't know, use the benefits of the internet and, and yeah. how people watch stuff. Uh, I, I think it, not, not easy, obviously, but you'd have a much easier time, um, gaining viewership and, and getting people who want to constantly come back to, to see what you're going to do, you know? Yeah. No, hundred percent. And again, I mean, he he is he's a genius when it comes when it comes to that stuff. And and what what's amazing with him, um, and, and his switch to YouTube, a lot of people were were questioning like why, um, because like obviously he grew quite the following on on Twitch, and um, and with so many of the the a lot of big streamers leaving Twitch to go to YouTube, um, and and even more rumored to to potentially go, yep. um. What I found interesting, there was, it was two things in particular that I found very interesting, um, you know, about about his move. One, um, and and a lot of the the streamers that have already moved have said this. Um, when he went to Twitch and and told them like, "Hey, I'm gonna sign with YouTube," even though he originally was just gonna sign with Twitch, he just wanted to see how they were gonna react. Twitch told him, "Good luck, best wishes." Yep. Um, to where YouTube, when he when he told YouTube the opposite, YouTube was like, "What can we do to get you to sign with us?" They they, they really, because prior to that, he wasn't even a contracted streamer. Um, so you know, it, it, at that point, it was like you could really tell there was that that effort and desire in YouTube to to one grow their their live streaming audience and their live streaming platform, um, mm-hmm. and do more with it and and. I mean, you could see that they that they cared um, to where with Twitch, I, I mean, Twitch, there's such a large chain of command there that um, like, you just you just don't see that same effort. Um, yeah. And the other thing and, uh, and again, a lot of streamers have have acknowledged that the other thing that I found very, very interesting uh, and it made a lot of sense to me. Ludwig is someone that has done so much outside of just playing video games like between uh the the mogul money stuff that he's done um there was there was the shit camp thing which was fucking hilarious um he's done so much outside of just gaming um a lot of people who have made the switch to YouTube, they have, if you go back and you look at any one of their videos, whether it be Kurt JD, Valkyrie, um, you know, Lupo, Tim the Tatman, um, hell, even Doc, when Doc first started streaming on YouTube, he even acknowledged it. Um, they all said the same thing. They all said 
that, you know, they wanted to do more than just gaming. And YouTube was giving them that opportunity because they weren't requiring as many hours. Yep. And part of their deal with YouTube was literally to do more than just live stream and do more than just sit there and play games live over the internet to, to you know, all these people. And, like, Doc even acknowledged it early on. He was like, you know, hey, like, I'm not going to stream eight hours a day, five days a week like I was used to. It's going to be like, I'm going to stream like three days at for maybe like four hours because I want to do more. I want to go do other things. Yep. Um, yep. Spend time know. with their families for Tim and yeah. Doc. I think that's that's very valuable. Right? Yep. Um, uh, Courage JD. I mean, Courage has done so much more outside of just being a, a a caster and uh you know and and playing games like he's done obviously stuff with the hundred thieves and uh you know their vlog series that they do on their channel and um he's done stuff with uh you know obviously various sponsorships with like Lexus and uh done commercials for YouTube and um he's even gotten into like the the music space as well and and mm-hmm. Like he's done more again outside of gaming. Um, Valkyrie, same thing. Um, and Ludwig said said the same thing when he when he made the switch. He was like, I I'm now able to do more than just sit there on a live screen and and just play games or talk to chat. Like now I can. He's like, I can do so much more. He has like so many more plans that he wants to do with Mogul Money, um, and have like a new take on it. Um. Yep. And and that's I think that is what interests me the most is that while YouTube is going after all these big names in live streaming uh, and specifically people who were on Twitch to where Twitch is literally just that it is just a live streaming space. They still want their their content creators to do more. They want them to be more than just live streamers. They want them to actually be content creators because they still want to keep that same mindset of what YouTube really is. It's a multimedia platform. It's not just live streaming entertainment. And I, and I love that. I think that's, they, they're sticking to their roots, even though they're still trying yeah. to, to grow and, and improve. One of the big things I think it's really good that YouTube is doing is they're, I mean, you can call it stealing. That's fine. But they're taking like the best features of each other big um, social platform and implementing it into YouTube. So, yep. so they did YouTube Shorts. So they basically copied TikToks. Yeah, it's literally the same thing. That, yeah, and implementing that into YouTube. That's great, though, right? Because they're getting people, hey, don't go to TikTok, right? Just stay here on YouTube where you're posting your regular videos anyway and also post uh, Shorts, which they made a dedicated section on the homepage. Yep. So a lot of people are going to naturally scroll through them and and, and and see what's on there and obviously it's youtube and google being google it's all your they're taking they're taking all your data and they're <laughs> and they're recommending uh things that you'd like right so it's all yep. if you're if you're big in the gaming it's all going to be probably war zone shit you know so yep. it, it's it's all yep. very uh tailored to you and then same thing like hey twitch is huge right let's take um some of their best features of their streaming and bring it over here because all twitch uh streamers Right, all of their edited videos, they don't go on Twitch. They go on YouTube. Yeah. So hey, instead of streaming on Twitch and then coming back over to us to upload the the VOD or the edited video, uh, stream on YouTube and then have the that entire VOD automatically upload to the channel, and then you could even still do a an edited video of that after the fact. And yep. I think once YouTube gets everyone who they want, right, um, to sign over, I think. Like, for example, I think Twitch got very lucky that they got XQC on a new deal just a couple years ago because yep. I'm sure YouTube would have aggressively went after him. Um, I think YouTube should aggressively go after someone like Asmongold, who I think would be a very good for the platform, right? If if YouTube can just fix uh, discoverability and, and make streams more... Um, uh, more highlighted like shorts are like maybe have like a, a short stream section where you're everyone you're subscribed to it'll show right in that little sidebar who's live currently streaming I think that'd be cool and then obviously make it easier for new streamers right like have a have a new streamer section like Twitch does or whatever yep to, to get people to click that and they and stuff 
they do have they do have that like the first thing you mentioned uh, they do already kind of have that to where like it shows your subscriptions it, it'll have like the like just the red circle around them um when they're live um so they do already kind of have that it, it it'd be nice if it was a little bit more present um yeah. but that does still show um and it'll actually it'll it'll even say live in like in their little profile like picture yeah one thing i think they should do like when you pull up twitch they have the uh the streams that are featured at the top it's like an yeah. arrow you you flick through correct i think youtube should do that for your subscriptions so I here's, agree. here's a bar for everyone you subscribe to flick through it'll show the preview for everyone and you you watch people want to watch live i think that'd be cool yeah um but yeah i mean and and of course they're they're expanding their their uh their YouTube membership uh, system now where you're yep. going to be able to gift it soon in 2022. Yep. And I think that'll be huge. Right. So we'll see. It's almost like YouTube is heading in an upward trend and Twitch is going in a downward trend, at least for now. Um, and I think YouTube is, uh, they're taking advantage of that. And it seems like YouTube, even though they're Google, they seem a lot less corporate than Twitch does where it seems like Twitch is it, it it's like almost nothing like it, it just seems like amazon is has both their hands in twitch and it's very set rules on who they could sign what amounts of money they could here's the minimum amount of hours we could allow them to do yep. each contract and it's non-negotiable right it's all non-negotiable where youtube almost seems like it's its own entity where they still get google's money but it seems like everyone who's involved with youtube is they're able to do things without Google's, uh, you know, say so per se. No. Uh, at least it comes off. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I no, I, I agree. Wrong, but it, at least it seems that way on, on the face surface, you know? 100%. Especially with like YouTube gaming in particular. Like YouTube gaming seems like it really is just its own little branch of, well, not little, but it, its own branch of YouTube. Um, and and it it truly does seem like they are just given full freedom control of what they want to do and, and how they want to approach things. Um, and I think that's obvious just just based off of some of the, the various contracts that they've been able to get streamers to sign to. And, um, you know, and, and even what this future approach is looking like in terms of uh, what it is that they they plan on adding and, and doing and things like that. Um. No, you're 100 percent right, and even uh, I mean I, Ludwig even acknowledged that in his you know in his video in terms of why he he made the switch. Um, yeah, you know even he he acknowledged that he was like you know he's like when you talk to Twitch like everything goes down a major pipeline that may take months before you even get an answer. Yeah. Um, to where with with YouTube and like the discussions he had with YouTube in, in terms of making the switch like it was all so like. Like he may like you weren't dealing necessarily with like maybe the top dog of like YouTube gaming, but like they were higher ups that like they had say in it. Yeah, it's almost um, like you're talking directly to the guys who make the decisions, which is right. of course a good thing, right? So hundred percent, hundred percent. Um. So yeah, so I, I think I, I love the approach that YouTube's making. I, I think, um, you know, I think I think as a whole, um, I think it's great for streaming. Um, yeah. and I and I think it's great for small streamers too because they they do have a lot of stuff planned that they want to do. Obviously, they're dumping a, a, as you mentioned, like sh YouTube Shorts, for example. Uh, they're dumping a ton of money into that to make that grow and and be, uh, you know, be a a big part of their platform. Um, and then the live stream as well. Like they're 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 doing so much more with that too, to where like clips can get trans just transition straight into Shorts, uh, which I think is an awesome freaking idea. Yeah, absolutely let the community handle that like that'd be really cool yep yep uh and then obviously the the membership system having uh adding finally adding the ability to do gifted memberships um and then even uh, just the live stream thing as a whole to where uh better discoverability better algorithms in place for that uh and really just a more prominent live stream page because now when you go to the live tab on youtube it's it's kind of horrendous um and and can definitely be reworked but um but yeah no i again i i love the steps they're taking i love what they're they're trying to do and 
um it's it's exciting to see what what the future is going to look like when it comes to that and i i think it's already a, a common discussion right now amongst a lot of small streamers like should i stay on twitch should i go to youtube gaming if i'm just starting should i just start on youtube um you know it's a very common discussion like where should i stream and i think come you know next year even 2023 I I think you're going to see so many people make the jump to YouTube over yeah, Twitch. Sure. Yeah. Even without contracts, I think I think even streamers that are uh, you know, smaller but still have a good following, like and they'll be like, "Hey, I mean, YouTube's looking up right now. I think we might uh we might transition over there." Yep. 100%. 100%. And everything we just said, by the way, um if Twitch decides to sponsor us, uh, <laughs> forget everything we just said i love twitch i love, I twitch TV. love twitch.tv I love it. <laughs> oh shit well mr lambert it's been fun it's been fun i yeah, i, I, great, dude. I said i said we were gonna talk for about 45 minutes it has been an hour and a half um yeah, dude, i have to be so bad it's not even funny <laughs> um but hey man i appreciate the time um and uh and and obviously we're gonna have you on on a on a regular basis um yep. so uh again man i mean thanks for thanks for taking the time out of your night um i'm gonna do my outro now so feel free to to go pee i don't need you anymore um okay bye, <laughs> I guess, man. yeah bye i guess yeah. uh um, no seriously no thanks for having me on um yeah, yeah. i uh definitely be more uh more common seeing me and, and hopefully we'll get some, some awesome guests, to, uh, you know, to continue having these types of conversations and stuff. So it'll, it'll, it'll be awesome going forward. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. It's, it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun, but, uh, but guys, that's going to do it. Thanks for tuning in. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If so, give it a like, um, let me know in the comments down below, which, uh, what's, what's some of your takes on some of the various topics that we've had. Um, and we talked about call of duty for like a solid, almost an hour i realized but um but again guys thanks for tuning in as always stay safe out there be kind of one another love one another and uh yeah adios take care